In 5.3, we deal with something called the binomial probability distribution, and I've kind of introduced it right here for you. You can see a lot of similarities to what I'm talking about and what we have over there, or at least the idea of flipping that coin. So the binomial, binomial, what's bi mean? Two. two. Nomial name, two or outcome, two outcome probability distribution. In this case, by of course means two. Nomial means for us, it means something like name, term, outcome. For us, it means outcome. What this is, is a probability distribution where there are only two outcomes. Two outcomes. Something considered a success and something considered a failure. Okay, something considered a success and something considered a failure. Now, let, let me warn you ahead of time. You can make a lot of things into a binomial distribution. Remember rolling the die? Two rolling the die. And you, you have actually six outcomes there, right? But if you say this, if you say my success is rolling a four, everything else would be a failure. Doesn't that only have two outcomes? You either get the four or you don't. Does that make sense to you? So we can make things into binomial distributions even if they have more than that number of number outcomes. We qualify them. One would be a success and one would be a failure. Nudge your head if you're with me. Okay, so that's, that's what this means. We categorize our two outcomes as a success or a failure. That way there's only two of them, binomial. So a type of probability distribution there, where there are only two outcomes. Success and failure. Now there's a few things you need to know about a binomial probability distribution before we actually go and do any examples. And that's some, some vocabulary, some symbol, symbolization, notation and what it takes to even have this binomial distribution here. So, here's the rules for this thing. First rule. You have to have a fixed number of trials, which means you can't go and do this procedure for eternity. It's got to end somewhere. For instance, this is, this, you're going to find out that this was a binomial distribution idea. You're flipping a coin, you're looking for heads. Heads would be a success, tails would be a failure. Does that make sense? In this case, we were looking for exactly, hope you listen to this terminology, exactly 501 successes. Does this make sense? In this case, we were looking for 501 or more successive successes. But it was out of how many tries? That would be our trials. So you, we fixed that. We had to fix that somewhere so that we can work with the problem. So number one, you have to have a fixed number of trials. You can't just flip the coin forever. It must be a fixed number of trials. Number two, oh, this one's got to be there, and you're going to be happy about this one, trust me. Do you remember, ho, oh, oh, well, you don't remember the addition rule, we just found that out, right? You're all going to be looking at the video, I'm going to have like a thousand views tonight about on that video for addition rule. But if you remember anything about the addition rule, that you looked back at your notes, which you should do occasionally, I hope, it's a long time between tests. Um, when you look back at there, you notice there was really, um, it, it, it mattered whether one probability depended on the other one, didn't it? It matters sometimes. And we had to have it so that those things were independent, otherwise we had a, a carryover. 
we had a crossover, we had to subtract that out. Remember that, when they could both occur at the same time? Uh, or where one probability affected the other one, that, that would make a big difference if we're having several probabilities in a row. That would make a difference. For instance, let me explain it according to this. This one, not so much. Exactly 501, that was just one probability. But this one, 501 or more. If you are flipping a coin, and what you get the first time affects what you get the next time, adding all these probabilities up would be extremely hard to do, right? Because 501, getting that head, would affect the 502nd or the 500. Third or the 504th, and you'd have a huge, massive uh, thing to deal with. Do you see what I'm talking about? So these probabilities have to be completely independent, not based on each other, which means I flip a coin, everything resets. I flip a coin, everything resets. Back to 50-50 every single time. I roll a die, I pick it up. Back to one-sixth chance for all those sides. Are you with me on this, folks? They've got to be independent. They cannot, uh, the probability of one, one outcome cannot affect the probability of another or I, I should say the occurrence of one outcome does not affect the others. Trials must be independent. That means the outcome of one trial does not affect any of the others. Third, this is where we get the binomial part. We just spoke about this. <laughs> Each trial has to have only two outcomes, either a success or a failure, or what you qualify a success and what you categorize a failure. So each trial has only two outcomes. That's got to naturally be there. That's how we start this whole thing out. And number four, the probability of a, of a success has to say the same for each trial that you do. For instance, if we're flipping a coin a thousand times, we're not going to go halfway through and say, oh, we're going to switch coins, and this one has more of a chance of beating heads. Okay, that, that wouldn't work so well for us. So the probability of getting ahead has to be the same every time. If we're rolling a die, the probability of rolling a three, if that was our success, would have to be the same every single time. It can't change. So we could do this with a weighted die. It would just have to be that the probabilities don't change halfway through my experiment, or a quarter of the way through, or vary by trial by trial. Are you with me on that? Yes. Yeah, no. Okay. So the every time you repeat the trial, the probability of a success is the same. Okay, there is some notation that I got to give you. When we're dealing in a binomial probability distribution, we got some letters we got to deal with. First one is n, little n. Little n usually stands for the number of things, right? The number in a sample. In our case, n stands for the number of trials we're repeating. Number of trials we're repeating. 
I'm going to do this down here as well, kind of refer you back to this example. That's why I left it on the board. But if, uh, if we're doing this example, what is our n in this case? That's how many times we're repeating the trial, so our n would certainly be 1,000. Very good. N would be 1,000. <coughs> if you're going back in your notes, maybe write this under under this one. Rewrite this example. Don't get those two confused. Just, just rewrite that. Or we're going to do several more examples, so just kind of keep this one in your mind right now, okay? Trust me, we'll do more examples. I don't want you going back, because that, that was not the idea for the end of section 5.2. This is a 5.3 idea. So number of trials, N would be 1,000 in this case. That's how many times we're repeating that procedure. There's a couple other letters. One of them is... Little p, not big p, little p, there's lowercase. Little p stands for the probability that you are going to get a successful trial. Is little p going to change throughout your procedure? No. No, that's what we said right here. Probability of success means the same in all trials. So little p is going to be the, the probability of getting a successful outcome in each individual trial. The probability of a successful outcome for each trial. So put in a single trial. probability of a successful outcome in a single trial. Okay, what's the opposite of the letter P? Q. Q, obviously. It's written backwards, right? It's so Q. That makes sense. If little p stands for the probability of a successful trial, or the probability of a successful outcome in a single trial, the probability of Q stands for, what do you think? Yeah, the probability of failure, for sure. This is the probability of a failing outcome. In a single trial. Well, we haven't dealt with our variable yet. We have n. n's going to be given to you. It's the number of trials that you have. p, lowercase letter p, is a probability of a successful trial. You'll also be given that. The same with q. You have to be given those things. Also, what you're looking for is the x. In our case, the x is the number of successes that you're looking for. Okay, the number of successes that you're looking for or the number of successes that occur in the end trials. One last one, big letter P. It's always with the of x, P of x. What's that big letter P stand for? Probability. It's probability. What's the x stand for again? Number of successes. It's the probability of getting that exact number of successes. Okay. This is the probability of getting this many successes. Okay, 
we're going to fill all the rest of this out. We're going to identify these items in just a second. Uh, but before we do, I need to make a couple things really, really clear for you. So put your pencils down or just stop or pause for a second and just, just listen. Uh, when we're doing these things, a lot of students get really confused with some of this terminology. And th usually people are pretty good at the end. And just a number of times repeating something. But they get really confused between this one, this one, and this one. Okay, these are tied together. This is a probability, sure, but this is just a number. Okay, here's the difference between these. X is the number of successes you want. P, lowercase letter P, is the probability of each of those successes happening. The probability of one single success occurring in your, out, in your trial. Okay, that's what that means. What this probability means is the probability of getting that many successes. So is X a probability? Is X a probability? X is just the number of successes you're looking for, whatever that happens to be. X is the number of successes you're looking for. Is this a probability? That's the probability of each one of those successes is happening. Successes is. Each one of those successes is happening. Okay? Over and over and over and over again. This, is this a probability? Definitely. This is the probability that you're going to get all of these successes, exactly that amount of successes. Do you see the interplay between them? These are both probabilities. This is trial by trial. This is overall, which is based on your number of successes you're looking for. Okay, so this, probability of each success that you get. This, the number of successes you're looking for. This, the probability of getting that number of successes. So let's go ahead and fill out the rest of the stuff. We knew n was 1,000. We're going to look for p, little p. Little p is the probability you're going to get a successful outcome. Now, in our case, what is our success in our case? What was it? Head. Yeah, getting ahead. And then I listen. A success, please, please listen carefully to this. A success is not getting 501 heads. A success is not getting 501 set heads. A success in this procedure is getting a single head. That is a success. Success is getting a head. Just one. Why do I say that? Well, because when we look at X, X counts up, notice the difference here, X counts up the number of successes we're looking for. The number of successes we're looking for. How many successes are we looking for in this, in this example? How many successes right here are we looking for? 501. That's what we're looking for. Notice the difference. The success, the success isn't, getting all, isn't getting 501 heads. The success is getting one head. We're just looking for that to happen how many times? Five more times. That's where our X comes in. So success is getting a head. X, we're looking for 501 successes. That's how that plays in there. We're looking for 501 successes. What's the probability of getting one success? Flipping a coin. This, uh, uh, assume this is standard coin. Flipping a coin is. Notice how you have to identify success as a single. Look at the board. Notice how you have to identify the success as a single because this probability is based on one single outcome. Yeah, you have to do that. X is, yeah, that's that's the number of successes you're looking for. Uh, if P is 0 0.50, how much is Q? Yeah. Why? One more thing, we, the last thing we'll talk about. How much does P plus Q have to equal? For sure. Probability of success or failure, you only have two outcomes, right? It's got to be one. This also leads to P equals 1 minus Q, be subtracted, or Q equals, or Q equals 1 minus P. <coughs> the only thing we haven't done is figure out this, but we're going to go ahead and figure that one out next time. So we now know N, we know probability of success for a single trial, probability of failure for a single trial. Uh, a success is a single outcome. It's a single outcome. X gives you the number of successes that you are looking for. How many feel okay with what we talked about so far? You all feel, even feel okay with this stuff over here? Mm -hmm. right. Very good. Can you put up the uh, formula? Like, I know there's going to be a formula, but I, I like to see the formula. Like, I'll put it up there in a minute. Okay. Don't worry about it.
So we're, we're trying to figure out this, these binomial <laughs> terms. Basically, this is what I want you to understand right now. What is our n, our lowercase p, our q, our x, and the probability of x we'll deal with in just a second. So we're looking at binomial probabilities. We're realizing that binomial means either success or a failure, and we need to identify all of these letters. So n, which we just talked about, was the number of trials that we're, we're having to occur in our, our whole entire procedure here. So how many trials are we dealing with in this particular weighted die problem. And yeah, we're rolling the die 10 times. So this trial is being repeated 10 times. So yeah, n is 10 for sure. n is 10. Let's go ahead and let's look for the probability. Well, firstly, we need to identify something. We need to identify what is our success and what we're considering to be a failure. I want you to identify these, even if your problem doesn't ask you for it, identify those on your problems, on the test or on your homework. Uh, be identifying that. I'll, I'll ask you for it on the test. I want you to understand what a success is in this case and what a failure is in this case. So let's look at this. The probability of rolling a 4 is 30%. The die is rolled 10 times. Find the probability of rolling exactly 8 fours. What is a success in this? Rolling a 4. Okay, a lot of people get confused here. Is the success rolling eight fours, or is, the success, is a success rolling a four? A four. A success has to be trial by trial based. Otherwise, you cannot find your lowercase letter p. It's got to be for one trial. So, you know, you can't find the whole idea is going to be to find the probability of a certain number of successes that's based on lowercase letter p, which is an individual by individual trial success rate or probability of success. So in our case, a success isn't rolling eight fours. It's rolling just one four. We're going to be looking for a certain number of successes. Do you see the, the interplay there? So in our case, a success is just rolling a four. Rolling a four, singular. OK, what's a failure? What would that be? Sure, we have, we have our six outcomes that are possible. So if you roll a one, two, three, five, or six, even though those are all different outcomes, right? There's six possible <coughs> outcomes. Notice that this is still a binomial probability because we have only one success and the rest are failures. We say four is our success. That's why we have this list out rolling a single four, that's a success. Everything else would be a failure. So in our case, failure is rolling anything else. Rolling one, two, three, five, and six. Feel okay with n, the success and the failures. Okay, I want you to be identifying all that stuff on your own as well. Let's go ahead and look to look for the probability of success. That's our lowercase letter p. The probability of success. Notice how if if I have that success is rolling eight fours, I can't even find that right now. You have no idea. That's what the question is actually asking you. So these things have to work together. A success should be probability of A success right here. So what's the probability of A single success? A rolling a four. Nope. Nope, it says up there at the very beginning, probability of rolling a four is? Oh, so this is a weighted die. So it's not just automatically one out of six. You've got to read for what the probability of success actually is. So if our success is rolling a four, we should say up there somewhere, it should be given to you in some way what the probability of success actually is. So probability of rolling a four, 30%. Am I going to put 30? No. What am I going to put? Good. We know probabilities are between 0 and 1. So if I give you a percentage, we've got to translate that to a decimal. So we have that. Let's shut off our cell phones, please. If P is 0 0.30, can you find Q? Can you find Q? The probability of failure. These things are complementary. You're either a success or a failure. It's kind of harsh, huh? You're successful or you're a failure. <laughs> no middle ground. You're not just average. No. Well, if, you're, if your probability of getting a success is 30% or 0 0.30, the probability of failure is everything else. So what is that? Yeah. The way we're figuring out the 0 0.70, we're taking 1 minus P. That's what that is. One minus the probability of success gives you the probability of failure. Those things have to add to one, therefore, uh, 
the number one minus either the probability of success or the probability of failure will give you the alternate, the complement of that. What else are we missing? Oh, yeah, X. X. What does X stand for again? The number of successes. Number, cool. number of successes we're looking for. So notice how a success would be a single thing. The number of successes, how many of these things, how many successes I'm looking for in my whole entire procedure. So how many successes am I looking for? Basically, eight, eight. if a success is rolling four, how many fours am I looking for? Eight. eight. Very good, yeah. Eight. We're looking for eight times that we're successful. Looking for exactly eight times we've rolled that four in this case. Last up, now comes the question, how do we find the probability, oops, how do we find the probability of exactly eight successes? Probability of eight successes. I want you to notice how the four is not here. We're not finding the probability of a four. Four, honestly, is kind of weird, but four is going to be irrelevant. What this comes down to is the number of successes you're looking for out of a certain number of trials. The fact that we're rolling fours, that's all great, but we're actually just looking for the number of successes. We did exactly the same thing if we had like a weighted die, and I said the probability of getting a head is 30%. Probability of getting a tail is 70%. We're looking to flip the coin 10 times and get eight heads. That's exactly the same problem. Exactly the same problem. Uh, so this is all based on the number of successes compared to the number of trials and considering the probability of success and failure for each trial. You're going to see what I mean in just a little bit, okay? See what I mean in just a little bit. So we're looking for the probability of exactly eight successes. Oh my gosh, how in the world do we do that? Well, there's a formula. There's a formula for how to find probabilities <coughs> in a binomial situation, which we have here. You ready for the formula? Yeah. Of course you are. I told you I'm on today. I told you about my, my math injury. <laughs> Go. Uh, so our formula. Here's the formula for the binomial probability formula. If you want to find the probability of a certain number of successes, the probability of a certain number of successes, Here's how the formula looks. I'm going to give you the formula, and then I'm going to tell you why it works the way it does. Does that look familiar? I hope that looks familiar to you. My back looks familiar. <laughs> does this look familiar to you? <laughs> That, look, that should look familiar to you. You just did that in section 4.7. What is this formula right now? Oh, good. You all remember the formula. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's awesome. It's either a permutation or a combination. It's one of the It's really similar to the combination one. It is the combination one. It's, oh, you know what? Uh, in fact, let me make that an X, and then it is the combination one. I think I, I accidentally put it in R. It should be an X. Um, oh, yeah, now it makes a whole lot more sense. So, now that did look familiar to you, did it? <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen that. Yeah, this is now the, the combination formula. This is, this would be NCX. That's what this is. That's what this, this section is. It's a number of combinations of ways that we can accomplish eight successes or however many successes out of ten trials. That many, many combinations is what we're looking for. Uh, so we're taking each of those combinations. We're not done with the formula, though. What we do now is multiply all those successes times the probability of success for each one. That means to the x power. So x right here is the number of successes we're looking for. We identify this as the probability of x, that's the number of successes. This is every time we have a success, 
We have to multiply that probability. That's what the P to the X comes from. Now, we also have to multiply every failure times the probability of failure, because we're looking for an exact number here. So this is kind of interesting to think about. We're, in our situation, we actually want eight successes, and we actually want how many failures? We want two failures. We want two failures in order to get those eight successes. Are you with me on that? So in our case, we have to multiply not only by the probability of success a certain number of times, we also want the probability of failure a certain number of times. What does this have to be, do you think? If we have x successes, we want how many failures? In, in this case, two failures, sure. But how about in variable form? N minus Say that again? N minus 2. N minus 2 for this situation, sure. That would be 10 minus 2. I don't have a 2 here. I have a... I'm sorry, not N minus 2. We have N minus 8, actually. That would give me the number of failures. Yeah, N minus 8. N minus what? X. X. That's right. If you have X successes and you have N total trials, how many failures do you have? Well, you have the total number of trials minus the number of successes. That gives you your failures. If you have eight successes out of ten trials, we want two or ten minus eight failures. You with me on this, folks? Y yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So this is the number of combinations that we can accomplish <coughs> x successes. This is the combinations of that happening, uh, where where you have different like a different scenario playing out on rolling your die. Because you're not just going to take your die and roll. Uh, let's see, what are we doing, fours? A four, a four, a four, a four, eight times, and then whatever else, the, the next two. We can roll a four and then a two, and then a four, a four, a four, and then a seven, or no, not a seven, we can't roll a seven, can we? <laughs> a six, and then a couple more fours, we could do that. Or we could roll a four and then a three, and then some other ones, or a four and then a five and some other ones. We could do all those situations, all those play into the number of ways we can get eight fours and two something else's. Yes? Two something else, whatever they are. We don't care. They're all in the same category of failing. We take each of those successes, we multiply that times the probability of P, or the probability of those successes. That's where this P to the X is coming from. This is over and over again. If we had eight successes, we'd be doing probability of success eight times. That's where we're getting that exponent. Probability of failure, we're taking, well, the total number of trials minus that many successes gives us the number of failures. We want two failures, we multiply this twice times itself. Probability of failing twice. That's where this formula is coming from. Now let's see if we can use this formula to find this probability. So we want the probability, oh by the way, if you want to make this a little more concise, I'll let you. Why don't, instead of doing all this work, because your calculator will actually do that, won't it? Let's just call it that. Let's do ncx times p of x times q n minus x. That's a little bit easier to accomplish on your calculator. We know how to do this. That's just an exponent. That's just an exponent. I'm going to do that over there so we, we can see it a little bit better. Right now, we're going to look for the probability of eight successes. The probability of eight successes. What this says to do is, first off, we're going to have n c x. What was our n in this case? You all so okay on that, right? That we have 10? Okay. Let's do this. We got 10 c, what was the x? Eight. Eight successes. The of x is ncx. In our case, we have 10 trials. We're looking for eight, exactly eight successes times. We're going to take the probability of each of those successes to the power, which happens to also be the number of successes. So what's our lowercase letter p? What would go right here? I'm going to put that in parentheses, but it's a little bit more nice that way, so you know that's a decimal in there, 0.30. What power is that going to be raised to, ladies and gentlemen? Eight. Eight. Sure. Sure. Why to the eighth power again? That's our number of successes. I want you to think about what we're doing. Think about what you're doing. This is the probability of each success. 
we're multiplying the probability of each success times itself for however many successes we want. So 0 0.3 times 0.3 times 0.3, eight times. That's where that eight's coming from. We want eight successes, multiply the probability of success times itself eight times. That's 0 0.30 to the eighth power in this particular case. Next up, we take the probability of failing. What's that probability? 0.70. And we're going to take that to what power in this case? 10 minus 8. Yeah, 10 minus 8, which is going to give us that 2. So n was 10, x was 8. So our probability is 10c8 times 0 0.30 to the 8th power times 0 0.70 to the 2nd power That will give us a probability of getting exactly, exactly eight successes. Again, the reason why this formula works, this is every possible way you can get eight successes out of ten rules. That's what that says. This is the probability of success. We want eight of them. This is the probability of failure. We want two of them. You multiply all those probabilities together, multiplication rule, and you have this formula. So based kind of on the multiplication rule, how this is derived. Let's do it. Find 10 C8 for me. You should know how to do that on your calculator. We've done that a couple times right before. What is it? Only 45. So there's 45 ways, rolling a die, that I could roll it 10 times and get exactly 8 fours. So 45. 45. Oh, by the way, I was going to mention this. Look at the board here real quick. The number 4 was the, four, was the number we're actually trying to roll, wasn't it? Did you use the number 4 at all? That's what I'm trying to tell you, is that this is not based on the specific value that you're trying to get. What it's based on is the number of successes you're looking at, considering your probabilities. Do you see the difference there? Four doesn't even play into our equation at all. It's just about the number of successes compared to the probability of each success, probability of each failure, the number of trials you have, and the number of successes you're looking for. It doesn't even have to do with the four. It's all about the number of successes. Yes, no? That's what I was trying to say earlier, or what I was saying earlier. So 45, that's this little part. Times, let's do 0 0.30 to the eighth power. 6.56. Oh, okay, times 10 to the negative 5. Right, because when you multiply decimal times decimal, you actually get a smaller decimal. So it can't be, so you put 6.56, you're way off. Okay, you're way, way off. You're going to get a number bigger than one. You're going to have a probability of like, oh, I don't know, 250 or something. That your probability has to be between 0 and 1. So when you're reading your calculator and you get times 10 to the negative fifth, you have to know what to do with that. So tell me exactly what you got. 6.56, is that what it says on your calculator? Okay, 6.561. Times 10 to the negative do you know what that means? Yes. That means you are one, two, three, four, five decimal places this way. That's what that means. So you do not put 6.561. You put 0. .00006561. Should you round these numbers, do you think? Man, they're so small. If you round them, you're going to be off. All right? You're going to be pretty off on that. So we can't round them. We're going to put exactly what our calculator says to the end, to the very end. <laughs> And we're going to do the same thing, 0 0.70 squared. That should give you 0 0.49. Do so 45 times 0 0.00006561 times 0 0.49. Okay. Say that one more time. Seven? Yeah, I just wrote it. It's probably 6666 forever. I'm wrong. I mean, it's probably goes 01. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that's that's good enough for us. In fact, most of the time we're going to end right about here. Most of the time we're going to end right about there. But to get right about here or here or here, you have to be very accurate with your numbers. You cannot round those things. Remember the rounding I told you about? Don't round to the very last step. That's what we're doing here. So what does that even mean? Oh, my. If you roll a die 10 times, what is the probability that you are going to get exactly eight number fours using this information? 
Is it big? It's like 0.1 percent, 0.14 percent. That's pretty rare, right? Pretty, pretty rare that you're going to roll that die ten times and get eight fours, and then two of something else's. That's pretty rare. By the way, what distinguishes rare from unrare or usual versus unusual? What what number are we looking for, probability speaking wise? 0 0.05, not 0.5, that'd be 50%. Okay, 0 0.05, that's 5%. If this is less than 5%, which it definitely is, then this is considered an unusual event, and this is very, very unusual. Very, very unusual there. Now let's consider, after we did this, how the next question? The next question is, what's the probability of rolling at most eight fours? In this class, you're going to have to be very good at knowing the interplay between at most, at least, more than, uh, or less than, and none. Those four situations occur a lot. More than, less than, at most, at least, and none. none none's the easy one, none being zero. Okay, but the, the in, at most, and at least, and more than, and less than are, are all different situations. What about finding the probability using the same information of rolling at most eight fours? Probability of rolling at most eight fours. Oh, let's think about it. Probability of rolling it mostly four. Does it mean we're going to pick up our die and we're going to roll it? We're still going to roll it ten times. Okay, same exact information up here. Same exact information. You kind of have to understand, though, what at most means. If you have at most eight dollars in your pocket, at most eight dollars, how much money could you potentially have in your pocket? Could, could you have eight dollars? Could you have nine dollars? No, but you could have eight, right? Could you have seven? Six? Five? Four? Three? Two? One? Zero? Negative? No, your pockets can't be. This would be negative. Right? Your pockets can't be. You own, you own, you own, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, you, you can't have negative, but you could have, in order to satisfy this, zero. You could have zero dollars, right? That's at most. It's not even anything. If one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or you could have eight. Somehow I get nine out of that. You could, get, you could get up to eight, including eight, and that would satisfy at most. Does that make sense? Less than, what if I had said less than eight? If I said less than eight, would eight be included in that? No. That no, would be seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, or zero. If I said at least eight, at least eight, that would be eight, eight included, and then what? Nine, nine, ten, or more than that. If I said more than eight, more than eight, would that be included in more than eight? Would eight be included in that? If you have more than eight dollars, do you have eight dollars? So you have 9 or 10 or 11 or 12 or 15 or 14. That's the interplay there between the at most, at least, more than, less than. You need to know, you need to really know those in order to get these problems right. So we're looking at at most 8. At most 8 means you could have 0, 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, or 5, or 6, or 7, or 8. Number 4 is that come up in your 10 rolls. Are you, are you with this? So this is kind of interesting. We just said that. Zero would satisfy this, right? Zero successes. Zero successes would satisfy this. Remember, this is successes here. If I get no fours, is that at most eight? Yes. We also said, or you could get one four. Would one four, one success, would one success, one four, satisfy at most eight? Or you could have two successes. Would two successes, two fours, satisfy at most eight? You with me on this? Mm -hmm. Or three? Or four? Or five? Or six? Or seven? Or eight? Do you agree with me that any of these situations would satisfy this situation? Either zero or one or two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight. Do you remember the or? We talked about the or. Hopefully you did go back and refresh your memory on what or means. 
How do I calculate the probability of an or? What do I do with those? You have them. Yeah. This is the probability of zero occurring, or one occurring, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six, or seven, or eight. You add all those probabilities together because that's an addition rule. <coughs> This is an addition rule for disjoint sets. You can't have both three successes and four successes. Can you? Can you get both three fours and four fours when you're rolling the die ten times? Can you get a certain number of successes and a different number of successes? For instance, imagine in your head. You're rolling the die ten times, okay? One, two, you're rolling the die. Can you get, out of your ten rolls, can you get both three fours only, exactly three fours, and four fours at the same, can you get both of those? Exactly three fours and exactly four fours. Those cannot happen at the same time. You can't, you, you can't get that. So here, when we're, when we're doing this, these are disjoint sets, disjoint outcomes. We add them all up. We don't have to worry about a crossover. That's what I'm trying to say here. There's no crossover. There's no and of them happening at the same time. We just add up each of those probabilities. So the probability of rolling at most eight fours comes down to the probability of rolling zero, plus the probability of rolling one, plus two, plus three, plus four, five, six, seven, and eight. How do we find each of these probabilities? Adding a condition one. It's that, okay. Can't you find the probability of zero? Let's do this real quick. Let's see what the probability of zero would be. Probability of zero, is that rolling a zero? Does that mean rolling a zero, folks? What does probability of zero mean? No fours. It means you have zero successes. It's not the probability of rolling a one. I don't care about that. What I care about is, is one success. It wasn't the probability of rolling eight. That was definitely not an eight. We don't even, can't even roll an eight. This was the probability of rolling eight fours, or getting eight successes. How many people understand the difference between those things? Could you kind of have to to really get this stuff. Otherwise, you should be asking a question or, or kind of thinking about this a little bit. So this is not the probability of rolling a zero. That can't even happen. All we can get is one through six. This is not the probability of rolling a one. We don't care about that. This is not the probability of rolling a four. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, I care about how many fours I'm rolling. This is the probability of rolling zero fours out of ten. This is the probability of rolling one four out of ten. This is the probability of rolling two fours out of ten, or eight fours out of ten. Do you see the difference there? Imagine if you do. Okay, that's, that's the big point here. So the probability of rolling zero fours out of ten, what would our x become? Zero. Zero, sure. Would our n change? Would our n change? No. Would our x change? Yes. That would now become a zero. Would our p change? No. X would become zero. Q would become, would change? n minus x, that would become 10. ten. Right. This would be 0, that would be 10, this would be 0. Uh, n choose 0 would still be something that you need to calculate. It would still happen on your calculator. It's not going to become 0. This probability does exist. You'd have to do that for this one, then you'd have to do that for this one, and do that 8 times and add them all up. Do you want to do that? Why not? It's super fun. <laughs> we just did This was exciting. exciting stuff. Yeah, it takes way too long. So you could do it though, couldn't you? Here's one, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's nine formulas that you would have to do nine times. Each time, the only thing that would be changing is x. And you'd redo your formula, find out this number nine times, and add them all up. However, some guy had a lot of time on his hands. It was me. And has done this <laughs> and has done this for you. You don't see what's what's done for you? It's kind of awesome. Do you remember how I told you that this action, this whole act of doing this, really had nothing to do with the fact that we were rolling a four? It had to do with the fact that we had ten trials, and we're trying to find eight successes with a certain probability. And you agreed with that. Right? You said, okay, yeah, it's really nothing to do with the four. It's all about the number of successes. Some guy realized that. And he made up a chart that basically does your work for you. So in the book that magically appeared in my hands, <laughs> what you're going to find on page, write this down, 749. Let's see if you can see that. Show and tell. 749. 
<laughs> you get this nice table thing. Looks like that. And what's at the very top is binomial probabilities. Remember how we talked about binomial probabilities just right now? Binomial probabilities, some guy did all your work for you, and he found all the probabilities to the fourth decimal place, uh, third decimal place, sorry, of all the situations that we'll accomplish, or that we'll have to face in this, in this book. So, here's how to read your table here. If you read your table, it says binomial probabilities on the top. I want you to notice up at the top left hand, it says some letters we should be kind of familiar with. What do you see? I see N. N stands for what? Number uh, X stands for? Number of Successes, for sure. It's not based on the value you're trying to get, it's the number you're trying to get. Uh, also, there's another letter. What's that letter? Can you read that? Is your eyesight that good? That's a, that's a P. Why don't you turn those lights off for me, would you? Good. Cool. A little bit better. That's the, the P. That's the probability of getting... Is this the probability of getting two successes, or is this the probability of each individual success right here? Each individual this, these are the probabilities of getting a certain number of successes. That's kind of cool. It does the work for you. So this is the probability of getting each individual success based on this information. Here's your N. Here's the number of successes you're looking for. Now you'll notice that if you'll have two trials, there's only three situations you could have. Zero successes, one success, or two successes. That's it. Same thing with three trials. You have zero, one, two, or three. It builds as you keep going through and going through. So let's see if we can do our problem. I hope you remember the probability over here was uh, 0 0.00144, right? Let's go ahead and try to find our situation on this, on this table over here. What was our N in our rolling the dice situation? Four. Let's keep going. We have... I'm seeing here's n, n is 9, right down here, n is 10. So we should be in this, this segment right over here, where n is 10. Are you with me, folks? Yes. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for the number of successes that we were trying to find. Now, in our situation, we were looking for how many successes exactly? Eight. Looking for eight successes. That's not zero, one, two. We're eight successes. And the probability of each success was how much? 30%. Okay, so what we're going to do, probability of success, we're finding that. We're finding N is 10. Eight successes we're looking for. Let's, let's see where those things cross. 0 0.001. We were more accurate, weren't we? Mm -hmm. We were 0 0.0014. But that's, that's the same value. That's what the guy found. He just rounded three decimal places. So we can find that value, 0 0.001, just by looking at a table. Now, why are, why are we doing this? We could just do the formula. Well, when we are looking for the probability of at most, well, geez, at most 8, that meant 0 or 1 or 2 or 3. And we would have to do the formula 9 times to find out at most 8 successes. Remember that? Can you find the probability of 0 successes just by looking at this? Yeah. It's right here. That one. It's 0 0.028. That's great. How about the probability of one success? Oh, it's 1.21. Someone's already done the math for you. Two successes, 0 0.233. Three successes, 0.267. How can I find the probability of at most eight successes? What am I going to do with those values I was just reading to you? Yeah. Let's just add them. We know that this was addition rule, right? So I, what we had up here on the board was the probability of zero plus the probability of one plus the probability of two successes plus three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's just add from here down to and including the 8. Here's what you have to be good at. Okay, Everybody's going to know to do this. It's not hard. You just go to your N. The, the X is listed for you. I mean, it's even letters are there. The P is listed for you. You just have to know what at most means, at least means, more than and less than. You have to know basically whether to include this 8 or not, whether to add up all these or all these. That's what you have to know. Also, one little piece of information, the 0 plus, just use 0 for that. 0 plus means less than 1,000. So 0, 0.000 something, that's what that means. 
Uh, so you would be able to find that on a calculator. This won't let you do that. Okay, so you, you, you have to use zero for that. So for us, let's go ahead and do that. Let's write these down, 0 0.028, 0 0.121, 0 0.233, 0 0.267, 0 0.200, 0 .200, and so on until you get to the eight, okay? Write those down because I'm going I'm to show you how to do this on a calculator. Did she do it? Yeah, you should have like point nine 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 nine. Good. What no? Point nine nine nine? Yeah. Oh yeah, point nine nine nine. Do you have all those written down? Does anybody have all those written down? Yes. Okay, good. Good, good, good. I'll write them in just a second. Um, I'm going to close this book. I'm going to show you how to do it on a calculator. So hopefully you have those written down. If not, we'll do it in like... Yeah, write all those down and add them up. You should get 0.999. Okay. Now, calculator people. There you go. Your scientific calculator will not do this, but this fantastic graphic calculator will. What you're going to do is turn on the calculator. We are dealing with the binomial, what's it called? Probability formula. And it's based on the probability distribution. We're under a distribution, so look real careful. You should have a distribution button. It's the distro. We're going to go to the distro. Go to the distributions right above the variables button. Right there. It pulls that up on the screen. Now, eventually, we will actually be dealing with all of this stuff right here. Maybe even this stuff. But scroll down a little bit, would you? Scroll down a little bit, and you're going to see that numbers 9, I'm oh, sorry, 10 and 8, those say binomial PDF and binomial CDF. Don't go to the poison. You know, we don't want poison. That's poison, actually. But uh, don't go to that one. You'll get sick. <laughs> We're just going to go here. You go to poison, you go too far. Uh, go to binomial PDF and binomial CDF. This is a point probability. This is a cumulative probability. Here's how this works. Watch carefully. If you want to find out an exact value, exact number of successes, that's considered a point probability. That's going to be your PDF. This is what's so cool about your calculator. If you want to find out up to and including something, that's cumulative. So if I want to find at most something that's up to and including 8. You with me on that? If I want to find less than, I'd go up to but not including. So I'd punch, punch in not 8 here, but 7, one less than that. Does that make sense to you? So you got to be smarter than your calculator is. you got to punch in the right numbers, but it will do the math for you. Here's how. What you're going to do, let's try the exactly 8 first. Exactly 8, you're going to punch in the number of trials you have first. So right now, the number of trials is how many? Then put a comma. Then put in the probability of success for those trials. In our case, it's 0.30. Commas above the the, uh, the seven. Then you put point three zero. That's a probability of success. And then you put how many successes you want. So comma. That's right here. I want how many successes? Eight. You don't have to even put the uh, the end parentheses. Just press enter. Point zero zero one four four six seven. That's exactly what we just calculated with all that work with the formulas. Now, if you want to find up to and including. Okay, up to and including. I have to do this kind of quickly and we're running out of time. But I'm going to go, you can watch this on the video again. Go to distribution again. Go down to binomial CDF. Press enter. What this will do, you have the same information, but what this will do, it will add up all the probabilities up to a certain number for you and including that number. So you have to be good at knowing whether you're supposed to include that number or not. Because if you put it, it's going to include it. If you want less than something, you go one less than that number. So we'd go 10 trials, probability of success is still 0 
we want, here's what you're saying here, folks. You're saying I want up to and including eight successes, 0.99985. That just added everything up to you, and it's more accurate than your table. How many people understood that? Okay, watch that video again. If you didn't quite catch how to do that on a calculator, this is very, very useful for you. Hearts, plus the probability of getting seven hearts would accomplish my game. If I get five hearts, six hearts, or seven hearts, I win. True? If I pull up seven hearts in a row, do I win the game? If I pull up six hearts, do I win the game? Yeah. Pull up five hearts, do I win the game? Yeah. How about four hearts? No, I feel the game. So those right there, this right here, this would be the only ways that we can accomplish winning our game. This is the probability of getting at least five hearts. That's the worst heart I've ever drawn. I don't even know what that looks like. Kind of like a fish tail, actually, going in the water. <laughs> Doesn't it? Like a whale tail? Anyway, whatever. Art. And last time I showed you a couple ways to go ahead and find this without doing a whole lot of work because honestly, you're not going to want to do the, the formula three times, are you? Formula is kind of kind of horrible. I mean, it's it's not bad for finding one, but it's kind of horrible for finding like more than more than one. Even one takes a long time. You have a table that works for you. You also have a calculator that works for you. Before we go ahead and do that, we'll show you how to find all those things. I want to determine a couple other other ideas. We're going to change our game a little bit. Okay. Firstly, let's say that this is this is our first game. We're going to figure this out in just a bit. But let's say that in the next game is. You win the game if you get exactly four hearts. Exactly four hearts. How many successes are we looking for there? How many successes from getting four hearts? One success. How many hearts am I? Uh, a success is a, is a heart, right? How many hearts am I looking for? Four. So it'll be four successes. Hey, tell me something. Would five hearts work for this? No. You lose. Would three hearts work for this? No. You lose. Okay, so in this situation, you would have to draw exactly four, no more, no less. Is that hard to do, do you think? It'd have to be like one of these combinations. No heart, no heart, yes heart, yes heart, no heart, yes heart, yes heart, no heart. That would be one combination. That's hard to do, right? You, every, every, every combination would, would have to have only four hearts in it, and, and everything else would have to be a different scene. So that's one more game. I want to do this. What's the probability? Let's say this is our game now. Our game is you can have at most three hearts. At most three. So let's see how that game would work out. If you drew a card, at most three, could you draw no hearts? Would you, how would you win that game if you could get at most? Think about this as I'm writing down. How would you win this game if you only could win if you got at most three hearts? No hearts, one heart. No hearts would work. Sure, what else would work? One heart, two hearts? Would three hearts work? That's at most three. How about four hearts? Five, six, seven, how about eight? Would you even consider eight? No, because it's outside of our, our range. Probability of more than how about this? You have to win the game. In order to win the game, you have to have more than five parts. Oh, I'm already using five. Let's say you have to have more than two hearts. In order to win the game, you have to have more than two hearts. Give me the scenarios for winning this game. More than two hearts. Give me the scenarios for winning. Three, okay. How about two? Why not two? You need more than two. More than two. So three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, one more. In order to win the game, 
you need less than what number have I used? Six. You need less than six hearts. Oh, that's one of the better ones I've ever drawn. That's pretty good. Five. Less than six hearts. Or win the game, you need less than six hearts. So let's look at that. What wins for less than six hearts? Zero wins. That's less than six. One, two, three, four, five, mm, six. No, that's not less than six. These are most of the scenarios you're going to see. Most things we see are at least, exactly, at most, more than, less than. Those are the scenarios. So now we have one, two, three, four. We have five games we're going to play on this with this one example, okay? So I have your cards. We're drawing one, put it back. Drawing one, put it back. Drawing one, put it back. We're going to do that seven times. What I want to do is find the probability of getting at least five hearts. Then exactly four, at most three, more than two, less than six. Are all the probabilities going to be the same? No. They're way off. They're going to be completely different probabilities. So the chances of winning are going to be different for every single game that we play. <clears throat> I'm going to show this to you on the table. We're also going to do this on the on the calculator. You see a couple of ways of doing that. Did you guys bring your tables today? Oh, yeah. You should probably bring them, just so you know. We'll, we'll be doing this uh, from time to time on your, on your tables. So for now, we'll look at the table that I have coming up here in just a bit. Uh, also, do you have your calculators? Go ahead and get your graphic calculators out if you have them, OK? okay. Yeah, I'll give, you the, I'll give you this table, the appropriate table for your test when the time comes to it, uh, so that you have at least the information there. So. Uh, I can't say, like, yeah, memorize this whole thing. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, that would take your life. You don't want to do that. So let's look at the probability of finding at least five hearts. You have to memorize those, by the way, or have these written down, because we're going to do this on the board uh, of well, the white screen. Actually, can you see it when it comes up? If I, probably not. how to use this table. What is this column for? And so in our case, in our game, what N are we using? So we're going to be down here. It's, it's below our screen right now, but I'm going to move this up. Uh, what's the X stand for? Number of what now? Successes. Yes, successes. This is my successes. What's this stand for? Probability for each success. Notice how that has to be based on success by success trial, or trial by trial basis. So what is our probability here? <coughs> Whoa, wait a second. What are we going to do with that? It's right in the middle of that. This table isn't going to work exactly perfect for us in this case. You're going to have to use your calculator, use the formula, or you're going to have to guesstimate there, which is not going to be the best for us. Uh, so just to make this a little bit better, can I, can I fudge that for a second? So you can use that? I'm going to fudge it for a second. So our probability is going to be a little inaccurate. Let's say that we have 
0.20. So I'm lying here. Yes, I know I'm lying, but I want you to be able to use that table uh, and get some appropriate answers out of that. Your, your calculator, by the way, will use the 0.25 just fine with no problems whatsoever. The table obviously has some drawbacks to it. We can do the 1, the 5, the 10%, the 20%, but then it goes up every 10% after that until you get to the 95 and 99. So this range, we'd have to go right in between those, just guesstimate between our, our 0.2 and our 0.3. Wouldn't be the best case for us. You guys with me on that? So all you can expect on your tests, on your homework, they might give you some of that. On the test, you can expect that one of your probabilities will be in one of these columns. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. So we're going to fudge this a little bit. I know this is not accurate, but we're going to say it's 0 0.20. Let's find the probability of at least five hearts. If we do at least five hearts, notice we're going to be in the one, two, three. We're going to be in the fourth column the whole time. Are you with me on this? Fourth column, let's move it on down. Don't you have to change the Q since you changed the probability? Yeah, of course I, I do. Fortunately for us, the Q is really not on this table. So if I did, then yeah, that would be a point eight zero now. So let's check that out. I've moved it so that this is our fourth column. We know that this is a 0 0.20. What we're looking for is right here the probability of at least five hearts happening. What accomplished the probability of five hearts? We already went through this. We could get five, six, or seven. True? Five, six, or seven. Those three situations. Let's look at that. Here's five hearts. This is the probability of exactly five hearts coming out of this situation. Here's six hearts, and here's seven hearts. So if we add it all that together, remember we treat this as pretty much a zero. This is less than 0 .001. So this is going to be how much altogether? Mm -hmm. How you show that, you say 0 .001 plus zero plus plus zero plus. You're going to get 0 .004. So the probability that you're going to win my game, is it good or not? For this particular one, getting at least five parts. Is that good? Why is it unusual? Yeah. It's not above 0 0.05, so it's less than or equal to 0 0.05, so that would be very unusual to win this game. Why would it be 0 0.001? What did I say? Oh, I don't know. I made a mistake. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't happen often, does it? But it does happen. <laughs> Just kidding, folks. I made a mistake. I did the 0 .01. I should have been 0 .04. Yeah, 0 .004 plus 0 plus 0 is 0 .004. So the probability is still not very good. I mean, we needed this to be a 5 right there. This is way less than that. So this is an unusual, unusual win. If you were to win this, it would not be normal. We should have to feel okay with that so far. Okay, good. Let's find the probability of getting exactly four hearts. Exactly four hearts. So let's look at that. Exactly four. So I see four right here. I know I'm in this column. Do I need to add anything on to this number if I'm looking for exactly four hearts? So this is 0 0.029. Which game would you rather play? Getting at, at least five hearts or getting exactly four hearts? So if you get to choose between those games, you'd probably say, I'd rather play the getting exactly four hearts. Even though the probability still sucks of you winning, it's still unusual, isn't it? Less than 5%. Still unusual. It's better than this game. Let's look at, at most, three hearts. At most, three hearts. If you had at most three, we already said that was, what, what's at most three again? Zero work. What else would work? One. Three's included in that? At most three. So we go back over to our column. We go, okay, zero hearts works. Okay. One heart works. Two hearts work. All the way to three. So we're looking at those four numbers right there. Zero, one, two, or three inclusive. So we're going to add all those things up. So 0 0.210, 0 0.367, 0 0.275, 0.115. Can someone add those for me and tell me what you get out of that? Point 
Point how much? Point nine seven. Hey, which game would you rather play now, huh? Which game would you rather play? You're almost guaranteed to win, right? You get at most three hearts. It's almost a guarantee to win. Now, of course, I did. I fudged the probabilities a little bit so we could use our table accurately. Uh, but still, that's a really high probability, isn't it? You're getting at most three hearts. Okay. Let's look at more than two hearts. What's the probability of getting more than two hearts? What's more than two mean? Is two included or not? Because that's basically the whole idea here. More than two. So more than two, we'd have to go, here's two, do I include that number or not? No. But I want more than two, so I do this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, I do the rest of them. So three or more. So what you understand is that more than two is the same thing as three or more. Are you guys getting that? Also the same as at least three. So add up that column, we do the 0 0.115, 0 0.029, 0 0.04, and then these are considered zero. How much is that? 0 0.148. 0 0.148. 0 0.148. So we add them. How about the less than six hearts? Less than six hearts here. What counts as less than six hearts? Five. So six is not included. So we'd have to do five or less. Oops, no, not that much. So less than six is five or less, or at most five. It's the same thing. If you add all that up, how much are you going to get? What you going to get there? Should be pretty close to 100%, like 0.999. How much? One, exactly one? Okay, so this is a little bit off because this this cannot be one, but it, it will round to one. There is some probability here, so I'm not going to put I'm not going to put one for you. If you ever get this this case and you add up and you haven't added the whole column, here's what you know about this: the whole column will equal one. There's a 100% probability you're going to land in one of these cases. However, there is some probability here, it's just rounded. In this particular case, these round in such a way that when you add them up, you get 1.00, right? So if you ever get that and you haven't added the whole column, don't do 1.00, just do like 0.9999. Give, give me an extra 9 on there. I don't know if this 9 is going to be accurate, but it's definitely not 1.00. I need you to know that. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with this so far? Now, would you like to see the way to do this on a calculator? Yes. Okay, let's do that. One of my tables. Can you see that okay? Now I kind of want to keep this zoomed in, um, so you'll have to kind of you'll have to remember what buttons that we are pressing. Firstly, where did we go to deal with the binomial distribution? Not math. We're now in. Can you see it down there? We're in a distribution, so we're going to use. Second, that's what I just pressed. And distribution is right there by my finger. So we're going to press the VARS button. That brings you to your distribution. There, that'll work a little bit better. So we're looking at our distribution. Which distribution are we going to go to? That's way down here, pass our chi-squared, pass our t, pass our f. Down here to binomial, you have two choices. You have the PDF and the CDF. 
which one of them works for a single value, the P or the C? Which one? The P. The P is for a point, one single point. The C means cumulative. Add, they'll add them all up for you. You put in the information the same way, so you really need to know which case you are working on. In our case, for at least five parts, at least five parts, which one are we working on? Are we working on a C or a P? Now, here's the problem with this. Maybe I'll come back to this one. I want to work on a couple of these other ones first, okay? I'll show you the at least. I'll show you the uh, more than in just a little bit. I want to show you the exactly first. Then I'm going to go through the at most, the less than. Then we'll do those other two. So, let, let's work on exactly for right now. For example, are we going to be on the P or the C? P. Okay, for at most, are we going to be on the P or the C? C. For the rest of them, we'll be on the C. We'll be all on the cumulative because we're talking about at most, less than, more than, all that stuff. If it says exactly, it's the P. If it's anything else, it's the C. Now, are you okay with that? So let's do the exactly four. For exactly four, do you remember what we plug in first? So now I'm going up to the P. I'm going to highlight the zero. I'll press enter. That should be on our screen right there. What do we plug in first for that? Seven. The, not the X. It's the... Seven. Seven, what's N, what's, oh, I just gave it to you. <laughs> what's the N stand for? N stand for seven. Yeah, it's the seven. That's our N. Then we find our comma, and we put in what next? X. Not X. You put in? The probability. The probability, sure. Put the probability. Probability of what? We put in this, right there. Or, if you want to do the previous example, you can do that right now. You put in 0.25 right now. Now, we're, we're, est we're we did this so we could use a table. Of course, uh, the realistic example would be 0.25. You with me on that? I want to show that to you so you know that your table doesn't work perfect in every case. Right? It's, it doesn't have everything. If this was a 0.28, you certainly wouldn't be able to use the table at all. It'd be, very, it'd be off. So here are 0 0.20. We're going to use this so you can see the, the numbers do match up or pretty close to match up on this. So 0 0.20, that is our probability of success for each trial. 0.2. What's the next thing that we plug in? X. Now comes our X. So with the calculator, you do an N, then your lowercase letter P, and then whatever X you're looking for. In our case, what's our X, ladies and gentlemen? We're over there. Four. Four. Point zero two eight six. Is it possible for you to turn off one of those lights? Not that one. That one. That one. So with the calculator, we got point zero two eight seven. Are these two numbers the same? Yeah. This one's actually supposed to be this one. It's just rounded. It's rounded more to fit on the table. Are you guys okay so far? All right, let's do the at most three parts. If you have at most three hearts, stick with me here, ladies and gentlemen. Even if you don't have a calculator, it's good to refresh your memory on how to do this. At most three hearts, are we going to be in the P or the C once again? C. So I'll go back to my distribution. I'll go down to the binomial CDF. I'll press enter on the CDF. That's the A. Did our trials change? Did our trials change? No. We still have seven. Did our probability of success for each trial change? No. We still have 0 0.20 or 0.2. Now, did the X's change? Yes. Now, you need to know what at most three means. This is what I'm talking about. Do we want to go up to three non-inclusive or up to three including three? Listen, if you want to include the 3, you put the 3. If you don't want to include the 3, you put the 2. Does that make sense? So we want at, let's say, where are we at? at most 3. That means 0, 1, 2, or the 3. We're going to put the 3. This is going to add up to the 3, including the 3. And it's going to give you 0.9666. Does that round to 0.967 like your table suggests? Yes. Absolutely. Oh, show. Okay, so we got 0.9666 forever. Let's do the less than six hearts. Less than six hearts. What works for less than six hearts? Does the six work or not? Does the six work for less than six? Ladies and gentlemen, need you with me. Does the six work? No. No. What works? Five. 
five or less. One, two, three, four, or five. Zero, one, two, three, four, or five. So when you do this one, you got to go back to your distribution every time. We're still on the CDF, but I want you to watch what I'm going to do here. If we're going to do less than six, be smarter than your calculator. Your calculator doesn't really know what you mean. It just says, I know to bug a number seven point two. You gotta be smarter than, than the problem in your calculator. You gotta know that what I'm really talking about is five or less, including the five. Less than six is five or less. Those are the same thing. So I'm gonna put in not six, because that would add the six. I'm gonna put in five, because I know that really the only way that I can accomplish this is zero, one, two, three, four, or five. I put in the five there, I press enter. 0.9996, a little off. Six. According to the calculator, that's what we get. Okay, I need you to raise your hand if you're okay and find what we have just found so far. Cool. Now the next ones, we're going to do, which ones have we done? The more than two hearts or the at least five hearts, all right? Here's the deal. It's oftentimes a lot easier to find out a complement of this thing than your calculator. Because your calculator won't directly give you this. If you plug in two, you know what? It's going to give you zero, one, or two. You've seen that, right? That's what these gave you. It's going to give you zero, one, or two. If you plug in one, it's going to give you zero, one. If you plug in three, it's not going to give you greater than that. It's going to give you zero, one, two, or three. So here's the idea. In order to use your calculator effectively, you need to understand the complement of what this is. So you need to understand that if I want more than two hearts, what we should be doing is finding the probability, what's the opposite of more At than most two three. parts? More than two, what's the opposite of more than two? At most two. At most two. One. Or less than, less than three. Or at, probably at most two would be the best way to think of that. So the complement of more than two hearts is at most two. Why are we doing that? Well, we know one thing about complements. Complements have to add up to what number? Let's just take this as one minus at most two. One minus at most two. Check it out. Aren't these things complements? More than two and at most two? More than two, think about more than two. Can you please think about more than two for me? What's more than two mean? Three, four, five. What's at most two mean? Zero, one. Are those things complements? You're either three, four, five, six, seven, or zero, one, two. Those things are complements. Instead of going for this one directly in your calculator, you gotta take one minus the complement. This would be our complement here. So let's look for at most two. Subtract that from our one. We'll go to our distribution button. We'll go down to the cumulative again. We'll plug in the seven. We'll plug in the point two. We'll plug in, what's the next number we're going to plug in? Two. Two. Now, when you're plugging in the two, remember what this is giving you right here when you do the, the two? That's giving you zero or one or two. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. It's not giving what you want. It's giving you the complement of what you want. Go we'll press enter. That's giving us point eight five one point eight five two zero. Well, just doing the math in my head, are these things equal? <coughs> take your calculator if you don't believe me. Take 1 minus 0 0.8520. Is it the same? Yes. Exactly the same on that one. It's kind of cool. Hey, not your head with me on that one. Is that okay with you? All right. Let's try one more. It's kind of over here in the dark. Change my sides. sides here. We want the probability of at least five parts. At least five parts means what? What does at least five mean to you? At most four. 
Okay. The complement would be at most four, but what's at least five mean? Does it include the five or not? Yes. Five, six, seven. What's the opposite or complement of five, six, seven? Zero to four. Zero to four. So we want at most the opposite or the complement of at least five parts is at most four parts. So if I want at least five hearts, I'm going to take one minus the probability of at most four hearts. Those are complementary events. We know they have to add up to one. So if I say probability of zero, one, two, three, or four, subtract that probability from my one, I get the probability of five, six, or seven. Raise your hand if you're okay. Still good. All right. Let's go ahead and do that probability. We'll go back to our distribution, go down to our cumulative, just like we've been doing. We'll still put in our seven, our point two zero, and we're going to go for now. What number are we going to plug in after that? Say 11? Yeah, we'll do our 4. We want up to and including 4. 0.9953. Oops. Point nine nine five three. Can you tell me what is 1 minus 0 0.9953, please? What was that, Mumbley? <laughs> hey, why, why aren't these the same? Why isn't it that when you round this one, it doesn't exactly equal this one like all the other ones? Why isn't that? Were these actually zeros? No. So if you were to add those up, you know what? They're probably going to be pretty close to 0.0007. It's probably going to be pretty close to that. That's why these things aren't exact, because the table is approximating. It's not going to more than three decimal places your calculator is. Would you raise your hand if this example made sense to you? Good. All right. That's fantastic.